Well, good morning. Uh, I'm very excited to be here to be talking about machines and the magic of fast learning. So let me go ahead and kick off the, uh, the slideshow in a moment. And we can talk a little bit about what we're going to be focusing on today, which is using a large corpus of data and really referencing applications as actors and data scientists as operators. This is now possible because data scientists are actually operationalizing data models and creating a synergistic feedback loop with machine learning that lets applications move faster, data scientists get more precise data, and a lot of great things in any given business. What we've seen, of course, though, is that there is a greater precision possible with this type of positive feedback loop. In addition, businesses can now tune what they're doing in real time. And lastly, to get ahead of the game, it's all about discovery and the ability to use these same models and look ahead about what will happen next. But I'm here this morning to talk about a very important issue for us, and it was referenced a little earlier about what can be done to help nonprofits working in big data. And in particular, we're working with Thorn, which is a nonprofit dedicated to eradicating the exploitation of children on the internet today. And I'm regretful to share some of these numbers because uh, they're downright um, shocking and very, very serious. In the same way that we've seen big data growth, there's been more than 5,000% increase in images of sexual exploited children online since 2007. And the fact is nearly half of all victims meet their perpetrators online first. So when we talk about creating a digital defense, and what Thorne is doing is a very, very important mission. It's about creating big data capability that lets them move faster and more effectively to find these children and return them to their families. Thorne has to sift through a vast amount of data daily. More than 100,000 ads are posted on the public web alone each day in the United States. And when you look at how this has to happen, they're using machine learning with facial recognition to provide an ability to understand what is going on in this, any given image that is posted onto, the, onto uh, the public web. This happens by taking a raster to vector conversion, creating a point map of a given face, and then in this ability with more than 5,000 data points to be able to apply on a given face, they can deduplicate, they can classify a given image, and then effectively they can correlate and match it, all to help law enforcement find that child and return them to their family. This is literally a needle in a haystack type of problem. When you convert this, you are literally sifting through multiple millions of images to identify this victim. And they have to do this every single time to make sure that they don't miss any given child. MemSQL worked with Thorn to add a new capability that lets them actually process this at a thousand-fold improvement time. By adding a vector dot product operation into the database uh, and going directly to Intel's AVX2 SIMD instruction set, you can now fully saturate a processor's pipeline and effectively do more floating point operations in a given uh, cycle to make this operation faster. And in terms of what this means, this is the ability to take what would be a positive match from 20 minutes down to 200 milliseconds. So when we talk about real time, it's important to remember that it can have very, very important real world impact. And as a matter of fact, we have uh, members of the Thorn team in the audience today. And if you would join me in thanking them for what they've done alone in 2016, they found more than 2,000 children and saved them returned to their families. So if we could give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> it's incredibly important. To, uh, to be able to help uh, big data challenges both uh, in, uh, for, in commerce and in nonprofits. And for me, this is one of the most important things I've been able to say how amazing it is to help Thorne achieve this mission. But to take a step back and to learn how we can apply this in other areas, there are so many different data sets that are pure imagery based that you can leverage machine learning to gain insights, whether it's mapping, social imagery, or even forms uh, that have handwriting. The ability to actually apply machine learning at scale accelerates a business's ability to operate. We've seen a number of our end users engage with TensorFlow to provide a lot of this machine learning, and it is a phenomenal framework. You can use Hadoop as a phenomenal data store to store lots and lots of this blob data, this image data. But the real question becomes, how can we actually accelerate that? And it actually turns into a Lambda architecture type of uh, uh, use case where you use a message queue like Kafka to fork the data, both to the permanent data lake, Hadoop, but also to a real-time in-memory processing system with TensorFlow and a data store like MemSQL, which has uh, high-speed vector algebra uh, built in. This is then able to be rendered out to that given model or application. 
So later today, we actually have a few customers talking about how they're using uh, real-time analytics at scale, uh, both Uber for uh, business intelligence and how Macy's is actually using it for real-time dashboarding uh, with clickstream analysis. Uh, you can also join us later today to pick up a book which goes into detail about this type of learning uh, called The Path to Predictive Analytics and Machine Learning, uh, published by O'Reilly. And I uh, want to thank you guys, of course, for uh, having me here this morning. Thank you.